Hello YouTube. So uh, this is the first time I've done this in a while, so it might be a bit awkward. I'm going to try going at this uh, more... Uh, what's the word? Avidly than I have before. So I'm starting off with this new account. This video will probably get deleted eventually if I ever grow a little bit. But uh, alright, well today I'm going to get into orbit for the first time, quote unquote. Not really. I have a few hundred hours in this game. Kerbal Space Program, but for anyone who has not gone into orbit, and for some reason the, the Scott Manley videos are not successful enough for them, here's a Mark 1 command pod. You want to get a, uh, a small decoupler to fit this, get some utility, you want to parachute so you guys make it back home, check your staging, Your uh, this should be a separate stage from that, from the parachute, uh, and just in case we're a little bit hot, let's not forget a heat shield. I've done that quite a few times. It's usually not the best experience afterwards. And it shouldn't really take too much to get into a simple orbit. Man, they have added a lot of fuel tanks in this game since the last time I played, seriously. But the concept should be about the same. You want about a medium tank. That's a big tank. Medium tank. The uh, FLT-400. And let's get one of these just on dock so we have it available to us in a second. So for the upper stage of the second stage, which will be our final stage, you want a smaller engine. Which what is the small engine nowadays? There, Terrier. All right. So this has a decent ISP for our purpose of 345 in the vacuum. But we want to get the stage up into orbit a little bit easier. So we're gonna get another one of these decouplers, smaller one than that, the DD12, and get two of these. Right now we have a weight of 13 tons, so as long as we have something that produces over 143 uh, thrust, uh, we should be pretty successful. So this produces 167, it also has gimbling, which will make it significantly more stable. And this craft should be able to get us into orbit. Uh, let's move this over into this stage, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, the second stage will be a lot more efficient, it's delta V will go up significantly once we're higher in the atmosphere. And uh, if for whatever reason, uh, no, this should be enough. 167 thrust for a uh, 14.5 tons. So basically what you want to do is divide the thrust by 10 at a sea level ASL, and that will give you about how many tons you can lift up. And so this untitled spacecraft, stellar, but uh, first orbit, let's name it something. All right. Got this mech jet installed. I'm not going to use that for the purpose of this. All right, don't, we all love loading screens, yeah? All right. So uh, you want to enable SAS by pressing the T button. It's the default button, at least. And you can either hold shift or hit the Z button. The Z button will max your throttle out. The X button will cut to zero. Uh, but hold shift to get it all the way up. And uh, it, to launch, just uh, make sure your staging is right. This should highlight the bottom engine, the, the middle decoupler, and the middle engine, or the second engine. The higher decoupler and the parachute should all be separate and in order before you launch. Uh, it is late in the day, so we'll be launching into night. Let's uh, change that. Let's go fast by hitting the the right caret key, which is above your right alt key on your keyboard, to the right of your space bar. And let's launch in the morning, so we'll be launching into daylight. All right, let's throttle up. You uh, time warp down by hitting the, the left caret key, which is to the, to the left of the right caret key. All right, once again, SAS, and let's go. So as you can see, we lift off relatively slow here, but we're not really overkill. This should be able to just get into orbit and just get us back, so. All right, speed up here. Normally, uh, with larger craft, you don't want to use physics warp, which is this one, two, three, four warp, but it'll be helpful for us to get into orbit faster with this, since it is a relatively small craft and should be pretty stable, even with a better or a higher level physics warp. Dude, I've been playing Kerbal Space Program since about 0 .14, 0 .15, I forget. It's been a very long time. I missed, uh, so there was a window of time where you could buy this game. Uh, okay, you want to start pitching over around 10 or 11k. Just be very slow about it, so you don't uh, throw your aircraft into a spin or spacecraft into a spin. Once you get to about 20, you want to pitch over a little bit more. Uh, let's make sure 
to run 1x. Alright, 25, you want to get it halfway over. As you can see here, we've got a lot of uh, delta V in this engine since we are higher up in the atmosphere, which makes our engine significantly more uh, efficient. So let's get this up to 100k so we can get a 100k circular orbit. All right. So let's move over to our second engine. And like I said, you use X to cut throttle off entirely. All right. And let's just cruise up to about here. So as I was saying, I've had this game since uh, early on. Uh, but it was right after there was a window where you could buy the game and get all the DLC for free. I got it like a month after that window, unfortunately. But I got all the DLC because it is more than worth it to get the DLC. I think all the parts on here are stock parts. They definitely have different arts than the last time I played this game. But they should all be stock parts, whether you have the DLC or not. In this orbit path, it's not the most efficient one, I must admit. But it should get you into orbit on any console. All right, so I lied. We're going to wait a little bit longer to get up here. But we are in space now. All right. So at this point, you want to level off between blue and orange here, 90 degrees, and just full throttle. We should have, we should get to 2250 to cut off about, and that should leave us a bit of delta V to get back home. And for now on, it's just smooth sailing, I guess. So he, there are, uh, this updated version of the game, it seems there are alternate launch sites. There's, I believe these are stock. I do have MechJev installed in one or two other things, but nothing that should impact the game significantly. Uh, so as you can see here, I, I pitched over, don't do that too much. I'm on a high physics warp. Just keep in mind that if you are on a higher physics warp, uh, all your inputs will be exaggerated significantly. So we're getting to about 2,000. Let's uh, slow down with this throttle here. Gonna cut it off until it apoapsis, which is the most efficient, to raise your uh, periapsis. All right, let's get this to 100k. All right, that should be good. So no, these are alternate launch stations, which I think have been up. They're new to me. I haven't really used them that often, but I believe they are stock. But uh, any of the mods I'm running right now have no sniffing impact on the game for the purposes of this video. Alright, so we are now in space. We have plenty of Delta V. We can even probably do a flyby of the moon, but uh, let's not do that right this second as we'll be uh, quite tight on fuel for the way back. So let's just zoom up till we're at the perigee, and we're going to, or close to the perigee, we're going to bring our apoapsis to about here, which should bring us to a near uh, KSC splashdown. Not perfect, but near it. So this will be a good time for you to uh, hit the F5 button, uh, just in case this isn't as perfect as you'd like. But this is about where I would put the 40k, if not 30k, if I was going to land a space plane or something else at the island airfield. But uh, now all that's left is to return home. And sorry for all the clicking on the keyboard, I don't really have a press to talk, I'm just here uh, talking on the mic per se, yeah? Oh, well, that yeah, is quite awkward. Not going to record it just for a text message though, or re-record it rather. All right, so we have re-entered the atmosphere. Uh, if your character has these buttons available to them, you want to have them set on retrograde. Uh, if not, you want to find this retrograde marker if you have enough fuel left. If not, you might have to put a little throttle in so you have some gimbling. And then you want to keep on that retrograde marker for uh, the duration of the flight as best you can. Uh, but for the simplicity, I'm going to put it on here so I don't have to worry about it right this second. Now all these are stock. So we might be falling significantly short here, it looks like, just from my guesstimate. I might have, I didn't calculate quite correctly, at least mentally, but we'll see. Now when I first got into this game, the my first orbit was pretty easy. But uh, getting to the moon was difficult, which I'll be doing videos on that pretty soon. They are my other channel, but that channel's dead right now, so we're not going to talk about that one. Uh, and my biggest struggle was actually uh, docking. Uh, but I've gotten really good at that in uh, recent years. 
and uh, people feel the nest the necessary uh, need to uh, that's redundant people are feeling the need to text me right now so let me turn off my notifications on my phone but yeah now we will be landing significantly short of KSC it looks like which is fine so it's completely fine to ditch your last thing here and you can even turn off SAS here and uh, just the aerodynamics will point your craft in the right direction uh, so I'm sorry we're landing on the night side. We might get a little bit of sunlight, but uh, oh yeah, it looks like we'll be getting some some early dawn. Uh, so you probably would have wanted your 40k to be over here-ish if you're going to do that again. But that's just something you have to learn and figure out yourself. It depends how hot you want to come in. It depends on your spacecraft too, so one location is never guaranteed. Uh, but also, space planes can glide a significant amount of this way. They don't have as much drag as this capsule would. Alright, so this red, uh, this uh, parachute icon is red right now, so you do not want to activate your parachute. But once it turns white, it's safe, but right now we are high enough up and we don't really want to get down there uh, too slow. Uh, now on larger spacecraft, you'd want to be more cautious. Let's slow down this physics warp. Uh, because if you have 4x physics warp, uh, it might do bad things to your spacecraft. Alright, so around 3k, it's pretty safe to deploy, and uh, you won't have to be waiting too long while it's dangling in the air. We've got a beautiful sunrise coming up pretty soon. And from now on, you just got about uh, 40 seconds to touchdown. Uh, I'm using time warp, so it won't take me as long. But time warp will be your friend if you know how to use it without breaking your aircraft uh, or spacecraft. But this is a very simple spacecraft, so don't have to worry about the, the cracking too much. And here we go, touchdown.